The U.S. has suspended food aid to North Korea after the country refused to cancel a scheduled rocket launch. Washington says this breaks the deal with North, with, in which North Korea agreed to suspend uranium enrichment and its nuclear missile tests in exchange for humanitarian support. Pyongyang says the launch is just intended to send a satellite to space. For some insight on this, I'm joined by James Corbett, editor of the Corbett Report, joining us from Osaka, Japan. So with this food assistance on hold, how will the North Korean uh, government feed its people? Well, that, I think, is the real crux of this issue, because, of course, it's being portrayed as nothing more than a, a U.S. policy to try to get the North Korean uh, government to change its policies. But what the real question is, is how this is going to filter down to the level of the people. And I think, really, ultimately, the only effects that this will have is to make the, the people of North Korea even more dependent on Pyongyang and the central power that they hold over the food supply and uh, further drive North Korea to, to other sources of food aid, most notably, of course, uh, China. Uh, obviously a rival for, for U.S. Uh, power and influence in the region. So I, I think uh, this is a, a clear example of the U.S. Shooting, shooting itself in the foot if it is indeed attempting to really uh, change the, the power structure of North Korean society through a move like this. Now, North Korea having this sort of, I believe it's pronounced Juche idea, this idea of independence from the outside world. So what does this initial acceptance of humanitarian food aid from the U.S. tell us about the situation in the country? Well, the situation there is horrendous from all accounts, and there have been rumors for years uh, of cannibalism going on in North Korea because of the in immense uh, uh, nature of the starvation going on there. And unfortunately, sadly, uh, th those reports were confirmed and those fears were confirmed in leaked police documents from inside North Korea last year, which uh, provided case examples of some of those uh, accounts of cannibalism. Of course, uh, not everyone is living in quite that squalid a condition, but it does go to show that, uh, that there are some extremely uh, dire examples of starvation going on there, and the people are, are very much dependent on this type of food aid. So any idea that North Korea really can function as some sort of uh, isolated community in the, in the international uh, stage is, I think, just absolute uh, pie-in-the-sky thinking. Now, the North insists that this satellite launch, which was scheduled for mid-April, is for scientific purposes and that it, in fact, was to estimate crop production there. Do you think Washington should, in this case, have given Pyongyang the benefit of the doubt? Well, that assumes that Washington is even being straightforward in what it's really attempting to do with this latest maneuver. And I think really it's important for people to understand the ideological pedigree of this idea that food aid can be used as this uh, tool of geopolitics. And that really goes back to a, a document called the National Security uh, Study Memorandum 200, which was penned in April 1974 by uh, Henry Kissinger, who at the time was opining that uh, the, uh, overpopulation in third world countries was the single greatest threat threat to the uh, American national security interests. And because of that, uh, we had to start asking the questions of whether uh, food aid could be used as a, as a, a tool, uh, an instrument of national power. That's almost a direct quote from the document itself. And uh, I think that idea has lingered for, for decades as, as this tool of uh, so-called real politic, which is really just uh, a, really a mask for the, uh, the, uh, the ability to use this food aid as a, as a geopolitical weapon. And uh, I, I think if uh, the U.S. was serious about actually uh, challenging North Korea and, of course, its ongoing nuclear program developments. They'd be looking into such things as uh, ABB, the European uh, energy giant, which concluded a $200 million uh, contract back in 2000 to provide light water reactors to North Korea, which formed part of the basis of their nuclear program. But, of course, that won't happen because one of the board members of ABB during that time was former U.S. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld. Now, the agreement between the U.S. and North Korea was reached last month. Why do you think North Korea has broken the conditions of this deal so soon after uh, agreeing to it? And it must have known that such a move would provoke a strong reaction from Washington. It could be the case of them testing the waters and seeing how far they can go with these agreements. Um, uh, certainly anyone who's been watching the situation in North Korea for the last several years knows that North Korea moves cannot be predicted and uh, and all of them seem to be in, in not in the favor of, uh, of their own country, country's interests. But in, in a certain way, it does play into the, uh, I think, the, the strategy of Pyongyang, which is to try to centralize more and more power in Pyongyang and in Kim Jong-un. And, uh, and that works to, to the benefit. Um, uh, the more that the people are relying on Pyongyang for their food aid, the more uh, the centralized control they have over the country. All right. What do you see in general for the future of the relationship between Washington and Pyongyang? 
I think that's uh, very much uh, open to to speculation at the moment, and it really does depend on on the next moves. As I say, Pyongyang and and what's coming out of there is just so unpredictable at the moment that I don't think we can really uh, uh, put a, a definite uh, figure on that. But I, I think there there must be some sort of uh, maneuver here, obviously coming during the uh, the nuclear uh, security summit taking place in South Korea. I think the timing of all of this is is extremely interesting to to watch. And it, again, it might be North Korea trying to to draw more attention to itself as as a player on the international political stage um, as it is being increasingly neglected for the, the presumed threat of Iran's nuclear program. So so it might even be a type of bargaining trip to get Washington more drawn into the region and more back at the table in terms of coming to uh, some sort of agreement, a broader agreement with North Korea. All right. James Corbett, editor of the Corbett Report, live for us from Osaka, Japan. Thank you.